the work of Bansi sir and thank you for inviting me. Uh, I was asked to speak on this topic at the last moment, so a lot of AI has gone into preparing it, not to cut short my time, but to improve the content and the quality. Uh, so yes, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take you through uh, quick updates on global uh, newer developments in the spectrum of the automated insulin deliveries, the continuous glucose monitoring system, and also with a touch of uh, uh, on how AI will be transfer, uh, transforming diabetes management, although my next speaker will be speaking in details on that. And we'll try to keep a few minutes for discussion at the end. So I'm going to talk about these four contexts. We'll be talking about the insulin delivery system, the CGMS, which has been uh, very well proven in our day-to-day -day practice. And now we are also going to be getting a lot of updates on the novel insulin formulations, especially the insulin and GLP-1 combinations, Icosima, which is under trial, and that looks very, very promising. And we are getting more and more AI-driven tools on digital health apps, some of which Dr. Uh, Sabu just mentioned, uh, in terms of uh, nutrition and personalized uh, uh, management of individuals. We will be also getting a lot of AI-driven continuous uh, mm, uh, clinical decision support system for the patients. So if you look at the insulin pumps, we, we've evolved from the generation of the first generation insulin pumps where there used to be the only the manual bolus adjustments to the second generation of pumps and the third generation of pumps started getting the CGM integrations with the real-time adjustment and at present we are in the 780G era where we have the current generation of hybrid closed loop systems. So with each of these developments, we are seeing that there is real-time glucose tracking using the CGMS, automated basal rate adjustment, that part has been achieved, automated bolus, not yet, very soon probably in the upcoming Medtronics uh, versions, and, and remote monitoring, which is very important because the user interface and the user experience has to be very enriched to improve the compliance. So the two most important and the most successful pump that you will get globally, of course, the 780G Metronics, which is available in our country as well. And the other one which is available in the West is Tandem TX2. This is not yet available in India, but this, this pump has got fantastic results in terms of the literature as we speak about it. So if you look at the, the, the whole spectrum of the latest innovations in the pumps, there are also the patch pumps and the tubeless designs. Uh, one such patch pump is Omnipod, which has the tubeless design for the patient comfort and adherence. There is also uh, modular pumps for customizable configurations to meet the individuals. We also have an invasive pump ever since. I'll show you about that. And now a lot of work is going on into the dual hormone system, which delivers both the insulin and the glucagon for better glycemic control. So for Medtronic 780G FD approved this closed loop system to be used in pediatric use that is for age two and above so this is this is one of the latest update and all these pumps have got variable technology integration with the smartwatch and smartphones so you can see here we are looking at three very very interesting pumps one is the metronic 780g uh, the image that you see on the so uh, yeah, one is the Vetronic 780G, and then you have the Tandrum control. The tan Tandem pump also has got a AI-enabled pump, which helps in uh, AI-driven dosing recommendation. And the Omnipod 5, which is used in the West, has got a tubeless integrated AID system. All these AID systems, the benefits predominantly are improved in glycemic control with reduction in glycemic variability and most important, the improvement in the time and range. There are lots of real-world evidences which demonstrate the significant improvement in the HP1C and the quality of life. But the most important part is where we try to re reduce the harm that it can cause is that it reduces the extremities, the glycemic variabilities, both in terms of hypoglycemic episodes and hyperglycemic episodes. I think a session back, we were having a discussion in the insulin pump workshop where T1Ds were experiencing and they were sharing the experiences of achieving 5.6 to 5.8 and 6 HP1C without any intense hypoglycemic episode. And that goes on to show the efficiency of these automated insulin delivery systems, which are running on the, AID, uh, on the AI algorithms over and above the existing PID technology and the control theory algorithm on that it works on. The other development that these pumps are having is that now it can be safely used in the subgroup of pediatric populations very, very safely. So we have more and more evidences coming on that in being used on type 1 diabetes children even below the age of 6 years, that is 2 years and above. 
So a look at these pump and I'm going to introduce another pump which is available. So I'm giving you a global picture in this update basically. So you have the Medtronic's pump, we are all used to knowing this pump. This is the tandem control IQ pump, the second one which, uh, which you are seeing here on the right. And the Omnipod pump uh, is a tubeless pump, a much more effortless pump, a much more user-friendly pump from the experience of the users. And there's a one pump which is called the Yoflow pump which is based out of Korea. Now, how can these uh, AID system connect to each other? So you can see the loops how in which they can connect, the Metronics pump with the Guardian Connect. The Dexcom, of course, has, can be connected with the Tandem, with the Beta Bionic Pancreas, which is also uh, FDA approved. And the Dibi loop is another uh, uh, such integration with the Dexcom, and uh, it gives integration with all the different kinds of pump. You also have the Metrum as well as, which has got the TouchCare Nano CGM uh, compatibility. Going ahead, you will be finding more and more CGM and AID compatibilities coming in. So cross compatibilities are going to come in, which will make the user, it will enable the user to choose, you know, a, a particular uh, CGM and use a separate kind of a pump, which will improve their uh, uh, compliance to use and it will, it will empower them rather to choose the, the right category of pump and CGM separately. So it doesn't always have to come in the package for the, for the patient. So that's, that's something which is going to be coming in the, in the days to come. But what we are also looking at in the AIDs is the development of the dual hormone AID system. And this is, this is the two products that I want to show you, the mod one which has received FDA level and, and the other one which, which has received a good amount of funding for, for development. So just keep a note out that this, this is really something to look out for. And some more uh, where we can probably have a future of all in all system uh, AID system with the uh, uh, dual hormone, you have the CGM integration, you have the AI algorithms and you have the upgraded uh, uh, insulin pump. So that is probably what this Korean company is trying to achieve with the EO patch and the EO pancreas which is still in development. So the future, uh, there's a lot of work happening across the globe in China as well. These are some of the Chinese and the Asian pump that you're looking at and uh, hopefully these will come into market in India probably earlier than the Western pumps. We have a lot of DIY pump users and uh, this, is, uh, this is an algorithm which shows how these open source AID systems can be integrated. So uh, a lot of loopers are there in the community which uses the Android APS and the loop and the iAPS for, for their looping and these have got uh, fantastic compatibility, although not recommended officially to be used, but they are doing it and it does give them fantastic result in terms of their glycemic control. So the CGM devices, now we have evolved in the, in the, in the whole spectrum of CGM from the early CGM where they, which is to require frequent calibrations to the latest CGM models which does not require calibrations at all and now we have the Dexcom G6 and G7 and we also have the Freestyle Libre 2 and 3, of course Libre is available in our country also and the Medtronic Guardian Connect. So the clinical impact of CGM, we all know it improves the HB1C and the time in range. It is very much beneficial for type 1 and type 2 diabetes patient in terms of their patient adherence, but most importantly, it brings in significant behavioral modification and we'll show you a study on this. There is a, there's a global manufacturers of CGM. So when we, when we say that, you know, there are not many makers of CGM, this map will tell you that there is a lot of CGM manufacturers across the globe. A quick look, this is Sinocare, some of us know already, it was introduced in DTEC. This is available in India. We are using it. There is also one CGM by Abbott, which is Lingo. And uh, I, you can see the links below. So you can just ex uh, take a snapshot of the slide and uh, explore it later. But these are not available in India. Dexcom has another CGM called Stello. And uh, this, is, uh, this is a very new launch and it's received a good amount of funding as well. So uh, we are looking forward to this. Now these are the integrate, integrated CGM. So you have C-Bionics which, which will be integrated with a watch and it has also got a continuous ketone meter. So now this is the evolution happening in the domain of CGM where the ketone monitoring is also coming up. Meki is again uh, from the Southeast, uh, from the Asia Pacific. Uh, it's a product of CGM. Uh, of course the Medtronics, uh, we have the CGM, the Guardian and the Guardian 4, Guardian Connect, but the good thing is now they have integration with the Abbott based CGM which was uh, released a few days back and we are looking forward to how that collaboration might end up being. 
Sensionix is another C continuous glucose monitoring that has received FDA approval and these are available in the Western market. And this was the latest development ever since, which is the invasive continuous glucose monitoring ever since E3 receiving an FDA approval uh, very, very recently. iSense is another next generation CGM, iSense Air 1 and iSense Air 2, which are also available and Roche also is coming up with AcuCheck Smart Guide CGM sensor. We are also looking at developments in terms of the novel insulin molecules. We have ultra-rapid acting insulins. We are also looking at icosema. There is work going on in, uh, you know, oral, uh, oral, pill, uh, oral insulin is going on, and we have nasal insulin also available, a freezer which might be coming to India probably very soon. And these novel insulin molecules will, of course, increase the efficacy and the acceptability amongst the patient. So what about artificial intelligence and diabetes management? Just a quick overview. There's some of the most commonly used apps across the globe is Gluco, which does a lot of integration with the CGM and the uh, uh, patient's uh, clinical decision support system. We also have Blue Loop, and you have Medtronic's Guardian Connect that uses, it predicts before the hypoglycemia happens, so that's where the, it uses pattern recognition predictive algorithms. So these AI-driven tools have got potentially a lot of benefits, especially in terms of virtual coaching. Uh, in, with the chatbots and personalized recommendations bringing that behavioral impact and some apps like MySugar, SugarMate, Diabeto, these are all running on AI algorithms. This is of course one of our own development, the Madhu AI, which uh, is uh, in, made in India for the world metabolic and diabetes health assistant and this is a chatbot which has been built and evaluated by doctors sitting here in this room itself. It's a WhatsApp user interface. Uh, it's built on a large language model. So all you need to do is scan the QR code on the left and you will be getting access to the Madhu page and there you'll be directed to your WhatsApp. And you can start using artificial intelligence through your WhatsApp as a patient education tool so the patient can use it. And this response that you will be getting is a validated and evaluated response by medical professionals. We will be seeing also a lot of integration of digital health and AI with diabetes management with real-time data sharing and remote management. And this real-time data sharing is very, very important in digital health platforms. And that would also enhance the remote telemedicine monitoring with the help of the CGM integration and the AID system. So basically, when we talk about closing the loop, we mean only this artificial pancreas system. But in true sense, closing the loop will actually be closing the whole loop, including the clinician, the CGM, the AID, the patient, the sensor, the biosensors that is giving the feedback, so that would give a complete integrated system in that clinical decision support system, which incorporates all these features. So there are a lot of real world evidences and clinical trials, like you can see here, the Minimed 780G has demonstrated a 0.6% reduction in A1C and a 10% increase in time in range amongst children between the age group of two to six years, that is fantastic. The tandem control IQ reduces A1C by 0.7% and shows 7% improvement in the time in range in the pediatric population. Some of the re uh, recent FDA approvals in diabetes technology, we had the Omnipod 5 in January 2022, Freestyle Libre, Dexcom G7, the Islet Beta Bionic Pancreas AID system recently last year, ever since as uh, E3 CGM system, Omnipod GO April 2023, and Tandem TX2. So these are the FDA approvals which we have received. Good amount of real world evidences are there on the impact of CGM in improving the patient's glycemic control and overall lifestyle in terms with the help of behavioral improvement. This is a paper I am just releasing out today. It has uh, still in press literally, but the DOI is out there. And this is a study that we have conducted on 500 patients. It's an original research where we had seen the impact of continuous glucose monitoring on the uh, glycemic control and lifestyle changes amongst diabetes patients. So we looked at the behavioral modifications that it would bring. And uh, a lot of AI has gone into doing the data analytics. In fact, this is the first paper probably published in the field of diabetology that has used AI for data analytics. And we have also acknowledged the use of AI. So you can see the, the diagrams that we have actually published in the paper are actually uh, created and have been analyzed using a lot of data analytics using AI. And uh, we wanted to set a trend here that when we're using AI for writing a paper, we must acknowledge the use of it. And this is probably the first time we have formally acknowledged the use of a chat GPT consensus AI 
for data analytics and drafting a continuous, uh, for drafting a research paper. So please feel free to go and read this paper. This is going to give you a lot of insights on how CGM has improved the glycemic control and lifestyle in an individual. So a lot of updates from the ATTD and the ESD. And if some of you have attended the recent ESD, if you look at the whole agenda of the ESD, this was the strength of all the topics that was covered on technology itself. And you could see such huge number of topics were there on artificial intelligence and diabetes complications. And this has been actually created by using AI on the EASD agenda. So there will be a lot of challenges coming in in terms of cost and reimbursement, technology literacy, device burden, and regulatory challenges. But we need to overcome these challenges. In the future, we will be looking at next generation closed loop with dual hormone AID, wearable technology, and smart insulin coming in, which is going to get activated get based on the patient's blood glucose level, reducing the need of frequent adjustment. In the directions of the whole spectrum of innovation and technology, we are looking at more and more uh, work on non-invasive glucose monitoring, AI and machine learning, gene therapy and regenerative medicine, and nanotechnology, which is the latest technology in insulin delivery. So just to summarize the developments all around the spectrum of insulin delivery, continuous glucose monitoring, AI-driven tools, but ongoing research is a huge, and we have fantastic prospects in the future. So at the end, I will invite all of you to join us at the virtual global summit of Doctors AI. This is the link for registration. It's going to be a two-day summit virtually, 14th and 15th of December, with global speakers from across the spectrum. Thank you very much.